Welcome, everyone, episode number 48 of Talking Kentucky. My name is Coleman Scott, and his name is Kevin Holmes. I'm here on a beautiful Friday night uh, for a Friday night edition of Talking Kentucky. Don't get those very often. Uh, and Caden Holmes is over in uh, Western Kentucky, and uh, he also held down the fort uh, for me last week while I was out uh, doing my day job as a trumpet player, uh, as they say. Uh, Caden, you also had uh, your brother and, and Cody on, and, it, and I listened back. It seems like it was a good episode. Yeah, it was a good episode. It never fails that whenever I host the show, there's like all these technical difficulties. I think it's some kind of omen that's on me right now, but you know, we're, we figured it out. We're back in business and I see you got the one and only talking Kentucky hat on. So that's exciting. Did we, did we get that hat out to Scott Salee yet for winning our bracket? We have not gotten that hat out officially yet, but uh, Scott is the official winner of the bracket contest, which, Caden, do we even know that yet? Like, have we even... I don't know if I announced that. I think I forgot about that. I think Scott said he forgot about it, too, so... We had this big competition and didn't even announce the answer. Well, two weeks ago, we did know that the winner of our bracket competition was, in fact, uh, Scotty P, the username Scotty P. We didn't know who that was. Uh, we assumed it might be Scott Sully who comments and calls in on our show from time to time. Uh, and so I texted Scott. I, I don't even know if I told this story on here yet. I texted Scott on our Talking Kentucky Facebook account. And I said, hey, did you win our bracket challenge? <laughs> and he says, I have no idea. <laughs> and uh, to which I replied, uh, well, what was your username? And he said, all I know is that my bracket name was Scotty P. And I said, well, you won. And he said, thanks, man. Do I get a hat? And I said, yes, you do. So we have to get the hat uh, out to him. But yes, congratulations to Scott Sully, who did win the first annual uh, Talking Kentucky March Madness uh, bracket challenge. So the best, the best part about this is just like any other Kentucky fan, once Kentucky loses, the tournament's basically dead to us. It is. He even forgot about his bracket challenge. <laughs> so and didn't he have Kentucky? I think he had uh Yukon losing to Kentucky in the championship. So I think he even had Kentucky winning it all. So that goes to tell you how big <laughs> homers we are that the winner of our bracket challenge had Kentucky winning it all. Um so uh but man, he had Yukon. I mean, there's not not too many people before the tournament saw Yukon winning winning it all, yeah. you know. So they also you were one of the few that saw Fairleigh Dickinson winning it all. So hey, I mean, to me, that was obvious. I mean, I, I knew Fairleigh Dickinson was gonna pull off that upset. It really wasn't that big of a surprise to me. For some reason, it was to, to other people. But uh today is national bulldogs are beautiful today. So, you know, Georgia, Mississippi State, Gonzaga, you know, all, all those bulldogs out there, uh, you're beautiful today. Um, it's National Educational Advisor Appreciation Day. And Caden, I don't know if she watches our show, but uh, I know one advisor I appreciate for my undergrad, and uh, and, and that's Jane Johnson. Uh, Kate. Oh yeah, for she sure. Was, she was a lifesaver. She was she was our advisor um, uh, for our undergrad at at UK, and and she was a lifesaver. I mean, she can make anything uh, happen. Answer all your questions. She uh, knows every class under the book, under the sun, too. No, she I does. Mean, she knows my heart. She, she knows, to if up. you want to do. Uh, class on scuba diving she knows exactly what that class is called she does i mean that's not an exaggeration at all um it's national big word day so maybe we can use a big word or two or, or think of a big word or two um by the time this episode is over uh it's national chickpea day which i can't participate in because i'm allergic to chickpeas uh i can't eat hummus or like any of that good stuff Caden, are, are you a chickpea fan do you, do you partake well, it's not something I think about on the regular, but I, I don't hate them. So, yeah, sure. Okay. Well, National Chick Piggy, Piggy Day. Uh, and uh, it's National Tea Day, if you like tea. Um, and uh, finally, uh, it's National Tuna Rights Day. Uh, read up and understand the basics of sustainable consumption this Tuna Rights Day. Um, I, I didn't know tuna had rights, but apparently... Apparently they do, I guess. Hey, that is something I have been eating is tuna. I think it's very good for you. How do you eat tuna? Like, I don't even, if I were like 
wanting to include tuna in my diet. I'm not even sure how I'd go about incorporating that. There's a bunch of different ways you can put it in rice and maybe rice and broccoli, or you can put it, make like eggs and tuna. And I don't know, you can put it in just about anything. Okay. Well, maybe I'll have to start incorporating. Yeah. Some tuna into my, into my diet. Um, that protein. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's, of course, that's, that would be one of the main reasons to eat it. I would think, uh, we're having a little bit of different audio set up tonight. So you guys in the comments can, can let us know, uh, if we sound okay to you, if we ever have like an echo at all, let us know and I can make a little adjustment, but, uh, hopefully, Everything will be good. We got a lot of people in the comments. We got Clyde Hare, Joshua Hart, Shell Green. Uh, looks like Marsh is out tonight, but indeed, Clyde told us uh, that Marsha did indeed tell us hello. So that that's always nice of her. Uh, I, I feel like Caden, we got like such a faithful audience that they they have to like send us an excused absence. Yeah, uh, when they're, they're like, away. yeah, they're like, do I have permission to miss the show? Yeah, as I know they got to send a doctor's like, note or something. Yeah, ask him to go to the bathroom or something in middle school. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> uh, Claude said it ain't so beautiful in Lexington with this rain. Caden, is it is it rainy up there in Kentucky today? Yeah, it's raining in the western Kentucky too today. Haven't spent uh, much time outside today. Not gonna lie. Hey, uh, Claude says because we love you all. Is isn't that nice, Caden? Yeah. They they love us. Yeah, we we need to start having a comment of the day, but we need someone to sponsor that. Yeah, first. We, need to, we need to sponsor for it first. Uh, but uh, hey, I wanted to to you know start off with a little bit of an exciting news uh, update today. Um, this summer, you know, uh, it, usually you know there's you know, of course there's no uh, no Kentucky basketball, even though we're we're going to go to. Uh, Canada this summer. So I guess there will be a little bit of Kentucky basketball. If there's no Kentucky basketball or football. Uh, so we, we try to line up some exciting things in the summer uh, and some, some entertaining things to, to keep you all interested and keep you all watching. Uh, Kate, AKA, you know, tier I, list. It, a, AKA the SEC fight songs tier list, which if you haven't checked that out yet, you need to go back to episode 46 um, to, to check that out. And uh, a specifically the video episode. That's really yeah. good. But I've been trying to line up some big guests uh, for the summer, Caden, and I think we've got our first big guest that is going to come on. Um, now, we, I, John Pong was, uh, of course, came on. Uh, I think it was back in the fall, and I get he, you know, he's a big guest, but I, I know him personally, so that's kind of uh, I, I don't really count that one since I, since I, you know I, I go to church with with John, but. This summer, Caden, are you are you ready to hear? Well, I've already told you, but should, should I get should I tell our audience who's going to come on the show this summer? To, to be decided. Hey, a, get get that Shane Sharp music rolling first. <laughs> that's that's very. I don't think that's a, an appropriate music necessarily. I don't think that's <laughs> there, like a drum roll there, kind is of. Is there music. a drum roll? I don't. Think I don't so. think probably on a paid version. This is the closest thing to a drum roll we have. Smashed. <laughs> so, um, pretend like that was a drum roll. Uh, we are going to have Freddie Maggard on the show this summer. He has a, agreed to come on, uh, for, uh, for an episode, uh, to talk a little bit, uh, about some Kentucky football stuff. Um, and, uh, Scott's art in the, in the, uh, comments here says, John is a solid guest. Love that guy. Yeah. John is awesome. Who I hope to have John on again this summer too, but yeah, Freddie Maggard's going to come on. So Caden, you better be ready to talk your football. Uh, former UK quarterback. Uh, he writes for KSR now, was on the coaching staff uh, a few years back. And so, Caden, I'm excited to, to talk to him. He will definitely be the, the biggest name we've had on this show so far. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, too. I honestly am just going to try to not make a fool out of myself. Um, oh well, I mean, he makes me look like a fool, you know, with uh, I mean, he, he I think he knows who our like third string uh long snapper is probably like he knows the, the roster better than anybody so i'm excited to to talk to him a little bit about things so that that'll be cool when when he comes on i mean wearing my kentucky football uh shirt you know to kind of kind of get ready for for that you know uh, preview that so that's exciting isn't it caden freddie maggard coming on the show that is exciting uh when did he play oh gosh uh, I'm gonna have to look that up before he comes on the show. I mean, it was, it 90s, was not 80s. I, I want to say it was 
probably 80s is what i would guess i mean it wasn't re it wasn't recently um but uh i, I don't want to call them old or anything either so you know i i need to need to nail that down but uh but yeah excited to have him on i got to meet him um at a ksr remote last summer and he was a super nice guy so uh he said he, he would be honored to come on our show so uh excited about that um but uh Claude says old town Colorado Matt Jones uh yeah apparently uh Matt Jones went to go see um his cousin Morgan Wallen in concert last night and he thinks one of his uh songs is called old town Colorado but it's not it's called something something Silverado uh but he keeps calling it old town Colorado so okay so oh it's a uh, San San my boots right San my like boots yeah, that's talking about? yeah something something silverado yeah I, I don't know i need to get into some some more morgan wall yeah, do you listen to a lot of morgan wallen he's came up on my spotify recently now coleman do you know about the cody told me about this but you know about the spotify dj do you use no. that feature i've i've heard of it but i i don't know what it is really well, no it's it's pretty scary but pretty cool at the same time like it'll bring up back stuff you listened to five years ago like it'll say oh here's your summer hits from a long time ago and it'll bring up stuff that you like used to listen to so to that, they're getting to know it the ai is getting to know us pretty well man it's 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 freaky the ai the ai stuff honestly freaks me out so i'm not really uh not not really a big uh proponent of all that yet but uh we'll see I feel like i'm getting old I'm like all these kids today with their ai stuff um Okay, and I went to my, I think since the last time I was on the show, which feels like forever ago, I, I went to my first NBA game, went to a Pelicans game uh, before they got eliminated uh, from playoff contention. They were playing the Clippers and they beat them. Uh, they beat Russ Westbrook and uh, Kawhi Leonard and all those guys. Uh, got to see the Pelicans in action. Uh, got to see the old Duke star, uh, Brandon Ingram, going at it. Uh, saw the other old Duke star uh, in his native habitat on the bench, Zion Williamson. Uh, he was there, uh, not doing much of anything, but it was fun, Caden. It was it was a big arena. Uh, the air conditioner uh, was, I, th I think, like the most powerful air conditioner in the building that was like controlling the temperature of the entire arena was directly above my seat and blowing on me. So that uh, made me a little bit uncomfortable for most of the game, but uh, I'm sure the players were comfortable. So, Yeah, I've noticed it's like just arenas in general, I feel like they're just freezing cold when you walk in, but – um, you, you said Russell Westbrook is on the Clippers. See, that's news to me. I don't really keep up with with any of. Yeah, I know. I mean, I, that well, guy's probably played for ten teams now, right? I didn't even know Durant was on the Suns. I turned on the the playoffs the other night and I saw Kevin Durant in the Phoenix Suns uniform. <laughs> so when did this happen? For all I they, knew, he was still on the Warriors. Did they win the championship last year or something? That's the only way it explains no, Durant I, the Suns. I, well, it, it was the Warriors won last year, right? Oh. And then the year before, I think it was the Bucks. And then maybe it's oh, the that's right. I think it was the Lakers before that during the COVID. Claude says Russell Westbrook. That's right. Uh, there was a guy, but Caden, you know how we went to the Kentucky Florida AM game. There was a guy yelling, nice offense, Cal, pretty much every possession. Well, there was sort of an equivalent guy at the Pelicans game, except uh, he yelled, Russ, uh, to, uh, to Westbrook, like every time he touched the ball, he yelled, Russ, you effing suck. Every time he touched the ball, uh, like at the top of his lungs. And, uh, man, talk about not being able to hit free throws. Russ could play for Kentucky because he, he could not hit free throws. He's going 0 for 2 left and right uh, the other night, which which ended up being big difference in the game. But, uh, yeah, Pelicans were down like the whole game. Uh, and then they came back in the fourth and won. So it was uh, – it was exciting for sure. It, it was right next to the Smoothie King centers, right there next to the Superdome. I'd never seen the Superdome in person before. It's kind of smaller than you would expect, but uh, you know, for it being uh, being the Superdome. But uh, it was it was cool nonetheless. I I'll have to go back when uh, when there's some Kentucky guys in the mix uh, playing there. Which we got a lot of Kentucky guys in the playoffs, and they're they're killing it right now. Yeah, my dad made a comment the other night. He's like, anytime, anytime I turn on an NBA game, I see a Kentucky player. And, yeah, that's probably about about right these days. But, Coleman, I was going to ask, regarding sports down there um, in your neck of the woods, didn't the, the Cats play LSU in baseball? They played LSU in baseball, yeah. I was going to go, but, you know, of course, I was out of town. That's why I wasn't on the show. 
uh, that I really did want to go. Um, first night, Cats got absolutely destroyed. Uh, second night, they had a big comeback uh, late. I think it was in like the fifth or sixth inning. They started coming back and won. And then it was a really close game, one run game uh, on Saturday. So to come and LSU doesn't lose at LSU very often. The number one team of the country by a long shot this year. Um, and for Kentucky to come in and win a game and almost win the series um, was was pretty pretty great for UK baseball. After last year, uh, we're kind of wondering, man, should we fire Nick Mangione uh, or not? For, for us to be doing as well as we are this year, um, it's, you know, being in the top 25 pretty much all season. Uh, it's, you know, things are looking up for UK baseball. Yeah, it sounds like it. I I saw they got blew out that first game, and then I saw everyone freaking out. They won the second. So I was, wasn't was sure how the series ended, but so we lost by by one. That's what you're saying. Yeah. But yeah, you know, if it, you know, if I win, I would have worn my Kentucky blue, all blue, not, not biased, uh, uh, for LSU, you know, would have worn my talking Kentucky hat. See how many people recognized it. The uh, question is, did you wear that stuff to the NBA game? I wore a Kentucky shirt to the NBA game. I swear to God, I did. Good yeah. Good yeah. Uh, yeah, I absolutely did. I didn't really, nobody commented on it, but I was wearing a Kentucky polo. Um, so yeah, I was I was hoping somebody would say something, but no. I did text my friend from Philadelphia last night and say, uh, uh, "You're welcome for Tyrese Maxey because he, you know, he's a big Philly homer." Uh, so, and then man, De'Aaron Fox went in clutch NBA clutch player of the year. I'm not sure like what statistics really determine that or if it's a vote, but uh, you know, it must have been that class you had with them. Oh, I know the math class. Yeah, I, I was in that. Know. I was in that statistics class with De'Aaron Fox and Bam Adebayo, 8 a.m. statistics class over there in the Johnson Science Building across from Kim Fizz. Uh, yeah, walked in pretty much every day uh, right behind De'Aaron and, and Bam, so I'm sure everybody thought, you know, that uh, I was hanging You were just part of the crew, yeah. I was part of the crew. Uh, so I sat at the table. You know, it's it kind of those old those those tables that you have like five or six people uh, per table. It, it was kind of like a large class, and, you know, um, I sat at, at one table with a bunch of normal people and at the table right next to mine was, uh, Bam and De'Aaron. So, uh, yeah, there were some other, uh, Kentucky greats in that class. Boone Williams was in that, uh, class football guy. Um, yeah. Isaac Humphreys was in that class who I, I talked to, uh, a little bit in that class. That was, that was nice. Uh, I almost got him to come play in a recital with my brass quintet. But uh, apparently it would have been some kind of NCAA violation at the time. Uh, not sure how, you know, but we can have we can have uh, Will Wade and and uh, all these guys paying players. But Isaac Humphreys can't play piano on my free brass quintet recital. So yeah, that's that the NCAA sense. for you. Yeah, um, that's that's how it is. Um, but uh, yeah. So speaking of the NBA playoffs, have you seen this this quote? Uh, of the dude, the trash talking LeBron. I forget his name. Uh, what's his name here? Dil- Dylan Brooks. I, no, I'm I not a NBA guy, so I don't know. So, um, Dylan Brooks, uh, that plays for the Grizzlies. Uh, and and by the way, the the first game since he said this is tonight. So we we should be able to see this trash talk uh, coming to action tonight as the Lakers and the and the Grizzlies go out of here. But uh. He said, I don't care. He's old. I poke bears. I don't respect no one until they come and give me 40. So he called LeBron old and challenged him to come drop 40 on him. I don't really feel like that's that much of trash talk, Caden. I don't feel like, uh, oh, unless you drop four or you can't drop 40 on me or whatever. Uh, I, I mean, what's he going to do if he scores 35? Is he going to go like, in your face, LeBron? You know, like I, I don't really, I don't really get how that trash talk works. Um, but he did call him old. So at this bold move to call LeBron James old, uh, Caden. Well, he is getting kind of old, so that's not that's not a lie. But... It's, it's not a lie, and I'm not a LeBron fan. You know, I I, I I dislike LeBron as much as the next guy. So, well, well, I don't understand why everyone's got their panties in a wad over all this trash talk these days. I mean, that one girl pointing the 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 championship ring finger at, yeah. at the, the Iowa yeah. player like 
It, this is basketball. This ain't no spelling bee. Yeah, it's no as in the words of Demarcus Cousins, this ain't no spelling bee. That's right. So so what's the big deal? I love it. Let's keep it, let's keep it coming. I love it too. Apparently in the bronze response, he was like, Yeah, I like the the competitiveness. And uh, but you know, do you know LeBron is gonna is gonna like if he if he has a 40 game in him, that he's gonna bring it tonight. I mean, he's gonna try to go all over that dude. Um, which I'm not looking forward to the LeBron uh trash talk. I'm the best, you know, kind of thing. But we don't even need to have the debate on the show of who's the goat, right? It's Michael Jordan, right? Like no nobody in here, even in the comments, like nobody thinks that that LeBron's the goat, right? I sure hope not, because I, I mean, it's not even close. Like, can't even – no one can even bring that up. It's no. it's just – it's a done deal. It's a dead giveaway. Dead giveaway is uh, – <laughs> who said that? Was, oh, Charles Ramsey. Charles that's, Ramsey, yeah. Uh, is that, that that's, the that's the next guest we need to have. Yeah, on we the show. need to have him on the show. Yeah, Freddie Maggard and then uh, Charles Ramsey on the show. Yeah, that'd be – okay. Josh Hart says a thousand percent MJ. Okay. Well, there, there you go, Josh, which by the way, Josh got his, uh, talking Kentucky mug, right? Finally. I heard that on the, on the show. I think Josh. Yeah, he did say that. And he needs to send us a picture so we can, he does. We can, Cause we, we don't, don't have one it, yet. We want to see what it, it looks, looks like, like and we can post yeah. it to the page. Yeah. The, like we have like the, uh, the graphic from Patreon, but who knows if, the, if they actually look yeah, like who good knows if, if that's actually real. Yeah. Josh can like give us a review on, you know, if it, if it actually works, you know, if it can yes. hold coffee, is it, and, does it leak? <laughs> yeah. Does it, does it leak? Is yeah. it sturdy? Yeah. Well, we try not to leak info here in talking Kentucky. Uh, Josh says, I've had a bad week, but I'll send it to you. Uh, well, hope, hopefully the mug can make it better. Josh. Uh, that, that that's what they're that's what we're here for. Talking Kentucky's here to make weeks better. That's he's absolutely. probably using it for his revolver beer. Let's let's be honest. That'll make it the, better. Yeah, it would. Uh, that's right. We need we still need to, we need to get them to sponsor us. We need to get them to sponsor the comment of the day. I feel like. Um, do you see Draymond pull a Christian Leitner and step on that guy's chest later night and get suspended? I saw a bunch of Draymond hate, and so I figured it was something like that. But no, I didn't know the specifics. Yeah, he he, it's like the dude fouled. I forget what his name is, uh, but the dude fouled him, like grabbed him or whatever, and then Draymond proceeded to like step and stand on the dude's chest. Like it wasn't a little uh, like love tap, like like Christian Leitner's was. It was like he actually stood up and like pushed off on him with all his weight on his chest. Um. And of course, he got a technical, it was like flagrant two, got thrown out of the game, and he got suspended for last night's game, but just suspended one game. Caden, do you feel like you feel like that's a one game suspension kind of thing? <laughs> you feel I feel like you should be suspended for like the entire series if you. I mean, it wasn't just yeah. a, a stomp; it was like he he like jumped on him. I mean, it, it could have like really hurt him if he put his weight on him. That that should be out for the rest of the year and the fine. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what a bunch of people have been saying. Man, he should he just should be kicked out for the rest of the season, rest of the playoffs. He can't it shocks me about him. He's a, a, a he's an Izzo guy, and usually they they have their heads heads on straight. But Draymond can't be doing that. Uh, Scott's art says MJ said that Kobe's the goat, but only because he stole all his moves. That's an uh, an opinion argument for sure. I have to remove Shaquille O'Neal. You have to go by what area you're talking. We're talking about. Well, I don't know. Well, didn't MJ say Co? He said the only person that might might beat him is Kobe it's because Kobe. he has all of his his moves. I think that's what he said. So basically, he's saying Kobe would beat him one out of ten games, which is probably yeah. accurate. No, sure. <laughs> um. Oh, and speaking of the mug. I wanted I wanted to mention too. Speaking of Josh's mug, uh, we have a new supporter on Patreon, and I know you gave a shout out to him last week, Caden. But uh, Caleb Purdue is now uh, supporting us on on Patreon, so I think he's also in the coffee mug tier. Um, so uh, so he'll be getting the coffee mug in the mail uh, as well. So shout out to Caleb Purdue for supporting us, um, uh, Caden. I was out of town, of course, last week, as we all know. And uh, I got to my hotel. And the first thing I see at the hotel 
is this sign. Would you like to know what this sign said? What kind of sign? Like on the wall or? No, it's a, it's a sign like on the on the, the sliding glass doors of the hotel. Like right first thing I see, like right in my, as I'm walking in. It says, attention guests, protective mockingbirds have nests in nearby trees. Proceed parking lot with caution. So I, I, I can't say I really expected to see that kind of sign, but I, it made me think like, what would I even do? Like if, if a protective mockingbird like attacked me, like, I mean, I started thinking about like what I would do, uh, like how I'd protect myself. And I really don't know how I would go about that. Like, what would you do if a mockingbird just attacked you? And is that even a situation that you even like fathomed as being possible uh, before I brought this up? Well, I've never been attacked by a bird, but I can imagine it probably does not feel good. Yeah. Um, I would probably swat at it and maybe with enough hits, it would might leave me alone. But I do believe. Do what? You said like Anthony Davis, just swat at it. Yeah. Just swat at it. I do believe with, uh, just like with any birds, probably they probably protective of their nests, but. Sure. Yeah, I don't really know what I would do. It would take me off guard for sure. Uh, Stephen says, uh, "Run and flail your arms." I think that's a that's a plausible you know scenario. I think I think that's a good way to cope with that. Uh, but the other thing I noticed after looking uh, looking at it on uh, of Josh says, I, "I just sent you a picture just now on Messenger." Okay, well, I have to I have to pull that up. I have to see if I can find that Talking Kentucky uh, mug that Josh Hart sent us on uh, on Messenger here in a minute. So I, after taking that, because I took a picture of the sign, of course, and I put it on Facebook. After looking at it more closely, I, I recognized that they misspelled Mockingbirds, and they wrote Mocking Birds. It's M-O-C-K-I-N-G-I-N-G <laughs> birds, and which I thought was even, uh, was even funnier. So um, I can't say I expected to see that sign, but but that's what it was. Um, well now I <laughs> see it. Can you see it Coleman? Oh, okay. I can see, I, I can see it. Yeah. On your phone. Uh, is that, how's it looking on your ends? The talking Kentucky blue look like it's, it's popping there. It's popping. I think the font could be a little bigger though. Well, I didn't have any, I didn't have any control over that, but <laughs> I think, I think it was as big as I can make it without it being blurry as is, is how it was. But you know, Caden's over here critiquing her mug. Hey, I'm just being honest. No, no it looks well, good. It does cool. look. It's got a very big handle on it. Probably good uh, a good grip. Uh, well, I'm glad yeah. our mugs have good grip. That's good. Steven says it's decent he, size too. Well, well, that there you go. Uh, I was attacked by a blue jay while cutting the grass once in high school. That bird was pissed. The blue jays are mean. I've heard that blue jays are actually like the the meanest uh, form of bird. That there and are. geese can get can get pretty vicious no, too. Geese too. Now, yeah, okay, yeah. If you're if you're classifying geese a, as birds, which I, I guess they are, uh, I, I don't know. They're a different kind of bird, I guess, but they can be mean. It's a yeah. bird. Geese is a bird. Turkey's a bird. We could we could make a tier list on this, Coleman. We could. And hey, look, hey, that's a good idea. The tier list. I, we I'm, can I'm find video that. evidence. That of was, these bird attacks. I think that's I think that's a bird bracket. You know, the blue jay can be the one seed. Yeah, that's a great great thing. Uh, Scott's art says, "How do we get a mug?" Well, Scott, I'm glad you asked. Uh, do, do you have, uh, Caden? You have the link. We usually do this at the end of the episode, but you can uh, become our supporter on Patreon, which Caden is going to put a link um, to our website that that tells more about that. Um, if you, if you become our supporter on there, then you can you can get a mug in the mail in return for your for your support. Uh, so, Caden's uh, going to drop that link in the comments there, and you oh can no, I, sp- I misspelled support. <laughs> surprise! <laughs> oh, okay. Surprise! The, the name of this episode could be talking surprise. <laughs> talking surprise. Well, hopefully, it is National Big Word Day, so uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe we can fool around with that a little bit more. Um, but, uh, 
Well, he'll he'll get that corrected in there. Okay, talkingkentucky.wordpress.com slash support. So if you click that in the comments there. Uh, Talk, that will slash you, surprise might take you somewhere you don't want to be. Yeah, you don't want to Google that. So, yeah, talkingkentucky.wordpress.com slash support. So click that link, and that'll tell you a little bit more about how to support us and get a mug. Or a sticker is another option. So, so glad you asked, Scott. Um uh Lisa Marie Scott says they like McDonald's fries, which sure that's a that's another uh actually topic I have on here. You can now get McDonald's special sauce that they put on their Big Mac. They're gonna start putting it in the little like containers that you can like, like as a condiment that you can just like put in your bag, like with your ketchup or anything else. So uh Caden, I don't know that I've even ever had a Big Mac or McDonald's special sauce. Um, so is that something you're going to partake in? Like, are you, are you pro special sauce packets? You know, it's funny you say this because I like always ask them for that sauce on the side and they like always hate me for asking that. They just like get in a bad mood and sometimes they're like, oh, we're not supposed to do that. But then sometimes they'll go do it anyways. They have to like walk across their restaurant to go pour that. So I'm glad. I'm really glad to hear that. I think a lot. I think that'll be a big hit. Uh, I, I'm surprised it took them this long to do that, though. I know it, it took them a while to realize that they should put their special sauce in packets. Like I, I feel like if you have a special sauce, like you, you sh- it should be a condiment yeah, like that's canes. available to your to your customers. Yeah, like canes. Actually, cane sauce is not so special anymore because I figured out how to make a pretty pretty copycat. Uh, recipe of cane sauce I, I i'm priding myself on on how accurate i can get my cane sauce so i think that's one of my unique uh qualities now you can try big mac sauce next uh yeah I'll, I'll have to do it um so obviously uh other than the big mac sauce news and these other things that have been uh, that we've been talking about um there's a lot of kentucky uh, men's basketball news that's floating out there. It's no secret, uh, especially the Oscar Sheboy Hunter Dickinson news that's going on. Uh, so we're going to get into all of that. But some news that just came out today, two Kentucky players enter the transfer portal. Damian Collins and C.J. Frederick uh, will both be transferring away from Kentucky. And Caden, I have to say, although I'm disappointed, I'm not surprised uh, by either one of those departures. Yeah, I'm not surprised at all. I I saw where he Collins might go to either Texas or Houston, which we've been calling Texas for a oh, for a while now. If he goes to Texas, you heard it here first, right? Yeah. Right. Where uh, Where is CJ going to go though? Is he going to go somewhere in Ohio? I'm hearing he's going to go like to either Cincinnati or Xavier. Yeah, somewhere local. I could see Xavier. I like. Yeah, I definitely could too. Um, so I feel like he's going to stay, stay local, especially since he's a engaged man now and everything. I I feel like he'll, he'll stay local and everything. I'm a little surprised that he's like transferring though. I thought he might just call it quits on basketball. Like I didn't think there was really any scenario that he would play for Kentucky next year, but I'm surprised he's going to keep playing basketball because he said like, you know, his body's shutting down and like, he's just getting old. So, because what is this His sixth year of basketball? That he's done. It, it cracks me up how all these basketball players are like 23. They're like, oh, I'm getting, getting sold. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I'm I'm 26 and I like walking around with Kane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Walking around with Kane. Yeah, that's right. Um, but uh and then Caden, I'm here now. I mean, we thought that this time last week that Chris Livingston was long gone. Uh, now Jack Pilgrim saying there's a 50 50 shot. He might come back. So okay. And that would be a big addition to the team next year. If you're telling me we can get Chris Livingston back, uh, I feel like that would be a huge boost. Uh, like that'd be a game changer for next year's roster. Yeah, it would be. I, I still am not confident enough to say, I think he will come back, but it sounds like yeah. there's that 50 50 chance now. So you're telling me well, there's a chance. Why do you think that is? Like, why? Because he was so adamant about going to the NBA, he forgot to even put in his statement that he was leaving the option open to return. Like, he didn't even say that. Now he was like, he he is leaving the option to Kentucky open to return, obviously. But he didn't. You know, most players say that in their statement. He didn't even say that. He was just kind of like had one foot out the door for a while. So, 
Caden, how could it be so set on leaving? And then, uh, and then now all of a sudden might come back. I don't know. Maybe after sitting down and talking to, to more people that are closer in that realm, maybe he thinks, I don't know. I, I do think over time, like throughout a week, he can probably talk to both sides and, and things get more solidified on what he can work on and then, or the, the roster change. And maybe he thinks coming back, he could have more opportunities than he originally thought. Maybe something like that. Well, that would be a huge addition to the to the roster next year for sure. And then who else do we know is already gone? Uh, Wheeler. W- Wheeler Wallace is gone. Uh, so What's really, Lance Ware going to do? Man, I'm surprised we haven't heard more about Lance Ware. I mean, I assume he's coming back, but at this point, but I, I really thought he might transfer like as soon as the season ended. Like, I, I, I mean, that's where my gut was going, right? I, it, that what you were thinking too? Yeah, I was. So, yeah, I don't know what Lance is going to do. I, I assume that by this point he's going to probably come back. But, I mean, he how could he not transfer, though, like with all these guys coming in? Like if Chris comes back especially, got Bradshaw coming in, if you have Dickinson coming in, you got Uganda. Like, yeah, where's the spot for Lance on the team next year? Isn't that crazy that every year – it, we feel like we have to hear from all like 15 players like, Oh, what's, yeah. what's he going to do back in the day when we had maybe one NBA player on every team, like you, no one had to make these statements. Cause you just knew, knew like, okay, Patrick Sparks, he's, he's a junior. He's going to come back next year. You know? Yeah, exactly. These days yeah. it's, it's different with the transfer portal with NIL. It's not the same. I remember, I remember being floored. Like I remember being shocked when Rondo left as a sophomore. I thought that yep. was like he left after two years. Like you, you thought like if somebody's really good, like they'll leave after their junior year, right? Yep. But then yep. to hear somebody after leaving after two years, and then now it's like, yeah, it's like you're wondering if anybody's going to come back every single year. Um, and even even though like even since the one done one and done era started, like we had a pretty good idea of who was leaving and who was coming back, like even halfway through the season. And now it's like a, you know, free for all. Like we don't know who's coming back. <laughs> so we don't have any idea. Um, no, we don't. And, you know, something else I was thinking about, we were talking um, the other night. Um, I guess this is kind of a, well, it's not a spoiler because it's probably not going to happen. But Coma and I were talking about Patrick Sparks. He he was one of our favorite players growing up. We were like, how, how do we get this guy yeah, we on the won. show? We wanted to we, be on the show, but we, we're we're not even we sure like, we if he's find him. still alive. Yeah, <laughs> it's like where is Patrick Spark? But, but that got me thinking. That got me thinking about all these players when we were growing up who graduated from UK and we never heard of them before. And so, yeah. or again, so ha- like, what do these guys do? Where do they go? Do they stay around Lexington? I mean, Ramel Bradley's in Louisville, uh, and he's a. Uh, I, he's a farmer basically right i never pegged ramel bradley as a farmer well he was a, he was a rapper turned farmer <laughs> yeah from brooklyn so yeah never never really pegged that but hey maybe we can get ramel bradley on the show you know we'll see but yeah patrick sparks like if anybody knows where patrick sparks is you know we we sure don't but he, he was our favorite player you know it's like the white guy that could shoot you know that's that that's who who i am as a basketball player okay no how about you Oh, exactly. That's all I got. Yeah. yeah, that's all I got. Um, so yeah, that's uh that's for sure. Well, we'll go ahead and take your calls. Uh 502-234-1504. Love to hear from you. Uh and uh you can give us your opinions on the uh well we have we haven't really gotten to the Oscar Hunter Dickinson stuff yet, but we can talk about that sort of as we go, as I know our callers will have opinions on that news. And uh, we can continue to talk about that. So uh, we'll see what's going on. I'm sure we're going to get some calls here. Uh, Clyde is calling in already. Clyde, how's it going, man? What's going on? I say we should just pack our bags and and put on our hunting gear and go on a Patrick Sparks hunt since we don't know where the hell he is. (laughs) But I think we should go and find that boy. Because honestly... 
I've only seen Patrick Sparks highlights. I never actually got to see him play like on TV or whatever. Like all I've seen oh, is yeah. that one, pretty much that one highlight of the Michigan State game is the only highlight I've seen of him. Yeah, um, and that's like his probably most famous moment. I got to see Patrick Sparks play in person uh, a couple times. I got to meet him once, which was pretty cool. Uh, but he Patrick Sparks is honestly probably the first Kentucky player I can I can remember like actually watching play. Like he's he's one of my early favorites. So, but so Ramon Bradley became a farmer. I thought he was still <laughs> rapping for some reason, but I know he goes to the basketball games all the time, and you know he's still known. Like you know Kentucky fans still up to date about him. I think some are up. Today about Jamal, I mean not Jamal, Joe Crawford. Joe Crawford, uh, yeah, uh, but, well, yeah. Joe Ramel's in, uh, he's in Louisville. He's in agriculture now, so he's he like owns his own business, I think. So it's 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 pretty crazy. Yeah, I never never thought I'd see the day Ramel Bradley would be a farmer. Oh really? Well, that's cool. But yeah, about uh, Collins and uh, CJ. You know, I'm not shocked. I'm not surprised at all. I was expecting it. But I am one thing I am shocked about is CJ like wanting to still continue his career. If I'm him, you know, his body's been through too much. It really has, you know, and it sucks because he's a great shooter. He is a great shooter, mm-hmm. and you know, it just sucks to see a great shooter like that go through too many injuries. And I hate it for the kid. And if I'm him, as much injuries as his body's gone through, I would retire and become a coach. Yeah, I'm or like at the school level or something. No, I agree. That that's why I'm shocked that that he's going to transfer somewhere else. Apparently, he's going to test the pro waters too. According, I think that's what yeah. Jack Pilgrim was saying on on his podcast. Um, but yeah, it honestly shocks me. I thought he'd just be done with basketball altogether. I thought that was sort of the the most likely option um, after the season ended. He's just got one year left, right? Yeah, I yeah, think he he's so, – yeah. So maybe he just wants to give it one more and then maybe slide on to coaching or something. You never know. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, same, same with Oscar and Reeves. They both have one year left. But And with Collins, you know, I say, yeah, he'll, he'll go close to family and – I mean, he just lost his grandfather, too. So that is going to lead him towards more back home, even more, you know. And, uh, you know, this Oscar and Hunter Dickinson situation is crazy. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> but yesterday, Oscar gave us his blessing, and it pretty much is telling you that he's not coming back, which is fine. You know, I actually do like Hunter Dickinson. Yeah, I know he said that he doesn't like Kentucky. But I think he was just saying all oh, that. He said that. Some I didn't hear that. When did he? When did he say that? Yeah, I don't. I didn't know that he that he said that. Was that like when we were going to play him? Oh, okay. Well, dang. Yeah, or maybe it might have been around the time where he said that they're scared to play us, and him and Lance Ware went back and forth. Like when that happened, I think that's when he also said it. But I think there's all that trash that talk too. stuff again. Yep. Yep. I think it's great. Right. Um, I think he's a good player. He's solid, man. He's an eighteen point nine rebound kid. Like the man can rebound and he can score and he can shoot threes. And I feel like he will be a post president that we've had not had in a while, and we missed that here. And not saying Oscar was a post president or anything, but I feel like Hunter is better around the around the basket than Oscar was. And Hunter, like you know, at times when we would throw the ball to Oscar. He was struggling to grab the ball. I don't think Hunter struggles with that too much, you know. But I know some fans are still Oscar. I'm still Oscar too, but if we get Hunter and not Oscar, I don't mind that either. Steve yeah. is right on his comment here. He Cal did try to recruit him in high school. I think he had Kentucky and like three other schools on his list. So oh, okay. kind of makes sense. He said he are I watched the interview with him actually. He said he like visited Kentucky in high school, so that's why he was not really needing to this time, but it looks like he is anyways. And then Cal came to visit him like the other day, a two hour flight. And uh, the reason yep. why Hunter didn't want to, you know, take a visit here because he's already been here 
So they pretty much know the roundabouts. But Cal basically showed up in his private jet and talked to him for two hours, basically made an official that basically made it like pretty much say, hey, come visit Sunday. And, and, you know, I think we'll get it. I think he'll make his decision Sunday, to be honest. I have a feeling that that's going to happen. I have a feeling it'll happen this weekend, too. And, I mean, I love Oscar. Don't get me wrong, but Caden, you can tell me if you agree with this. Um, I think that Hunter Dickinson might be a better option for us next year because we can spread the floor more because Hunter Dickinson sort of has a mid-range game and Oscar really doesn't. Um, Now, I'd love to have the double-double machine that Oscar is uh, with the rebounds, but besides rebounding, you know, most of his points that he got on those double-doubles came from, like, second-chance put-back points. And if you're telling me that we can spread the floor a little bit more with Hunter Dickinson having these like jump shots, then I mean, I think that's what we need. So, yeah, I don't understand why everyone's counting Oscar out like just because Hunter Dickinson, the guy was a national player of the year. He gets every rebound known to men and he's uh, seemingly to be a really good person, Christian person. I, I am fully behind Oscar coming back, but it sounds like that's not happening. So, I guess the next best thing is to get Hunter Dickinson. Yeah. Yeah, that's my best bet, too, because, I mean, you know, I think he'll fit well in with next year's team. And with Cal's system, I think he'll, you know, I think he'll work. And uh, like I said, he's a good player, solid player. Um, You know, I mean, he, even though Oscar dominated him, but then again, Hunter did have more points than Oscar when we played in this past season. He's a good post president. He's solid. I'll take him, and um, hopefully we can know what happened Sunday because that's when he's coming. And I think, you know, once he makes his decision, I think we'll have to close the door on Oscar because there's no way that both of them will be on next year's team. There's, that's just Why yeah. can't we? Why not? Why can't we have two big men? I don't – I hate that when people are saying uh, that too. Like – I'm, I'm actually with you. I'm actually with you, Claude. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I'm actually, I, I'm actually being on the opposite side of the fence with on Caden with this one. Oh, uh, why? 2015 was just such a bad year, wasn't it? When we had well, about 15. No, man, I, I, Oscar likes to get. You saw Oscar fighting Jacob Toppin for every rebound this year. How does you that know? have anything to do with this, though? Uh, Os, Oscar's. I mean. Oscar's a yeah a great Christian guy, but like he wants his rebounds and he wants his playing time. And I feel like if you have that, you know, I don't think Oscar's a bad guy, but I think he's very in his own world from everybody else. And I think that that could have caused maybe some yeah. some chemistry issues on the team this year that we didn't see from behind the scenes. And and why, I think why that, is Oscar getting all the blame though? I don't I don't well I. I don't know. I just feel like he's, you know, he's older. He's just on different kind of, I don't know. He's a, he's a different vibe than everybody else. He's, he was getting all the NIL stuff. I don't know. I'm starting to sound like well, that's Parker. NIL problem, not not yeah. Oscar. Well, I don't well, know. Like Kareem, you know, like I was watching that Lakers thing on on Hulu, and uh, you know about the Lakers, and everybody was talking about how Kareem was his own dude. He did his own thing. And that kind of reminded you this year of Oscar. You know, Oscar goes to revivals. He goes to church. He preaches. You know, he does Bible study, when, you know, every day. And, you know, he's really in the Word of God. And these other players, they're just like playing 2K or in the gym or hanging out with their friends and whatever. It's just like, you know, Oscar was very, very different than everybody else on the team. And, yeah. you know, that's okay, you know, but – then again, I feel like Oscar, you know, probably should have hung out with the guys a little bit more to be more relatable. But I mean, obviously they trusted him on the court, obviously, because, you know, they, you know, they always talked about how they trusted him because the, the amount of rebounds he gets. So, you know, it's just, it was, a, this this year's past team was weird. They, you know, it was weird. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Clyde, we'll, we'll let we'll let you go here. It gets to some other other callers, but thanks for calling in as always. Absolutely, and uh, appreciate you all. And uh, keep grinding. All right, we'll keep grinding, man. Talk to you soon. All right. Yes, sir. 
All right, give us a shout on the Talking Kentucky phone line. It, it's really the Talking Kentucky Claude Hare phone line because he was the first person yeah. to ever call in on it. Yeah, we said we got, were naming it that, but we've never – we need to add that to the banner or something. We do need to add that to the banner, uh, you know, and we don't have a sponsor for it yet. So until we get a sponsor, it is the, the Claude Hare phone line. I haven't uh, seen banners in a while, so – yeah, anyways that's uh that's sure that, that's uh that's for sure i like this content uh, you can't have you a bench this it. year for God. It, it sounds like it's uh it sounds like kyle is on your side there with the two <laughs> big men then uh hey you're on with talking Kentuckys. is josh hart yes sir how you doing all doing tonight what's up josh we're doing well glad you got your mug yeah pretty cool it's just a basic little mug um you know, it's a talk of Kentucky. It's white with blue lettering, so it's pretty cool. I, I'd rather have the mug than the sticker because sticker, you know, can like lose. Oh sure. Luster after a while. Yep. No, no doubt. That that's why it's yeah, there. that mug ain't never losing his luster. Yeah, that's right. That no. that mug's gonna be there. Yeah. I've uh, <laughs> got put up in my room right now, but um, there you go. Yeah, I'm still in Kentucky. I've not been back on the road for uh, almost. This is getting ready to be. The um, almost two weeks now. I'm going to be out for another week. Damn, where, where are you headed this time? You say you're headed to Missouri. Is that right? Do I remember I that? Was, I was supposed to be in Missouri yesterday, and because of that vehicle wreck, um. Oh, uh, I saw I, that, man. Are you okay? I saw that on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm sore. Uh, my back sore, and my shoulder hurts really bad. So, you know. I got getting a lot. I've had to contact some people I'd never thought I'd have to do in my life. But yeah. You got to take care of yourself. So, uh, yeah, I'm okay. Uh, it could have been worse. It, if uh, it had been a second later, maybe uh, she would hit me on my driver's side and uh, I could have been really hurt. So, I count my blessings. It's a vehicle. It's replaceable. Human lives are not. Well, we're glad you're okay, man. Um, yeah, that's... Man, no wonder you've had a bad week. Yeah, that that's crazy. Uh, well, we yeah. hope hope you're feeling better soon, and and, and glad that uh, glad you're okay. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate yeah. that. Um, but some, um, I was thinking about on when you y'all can do on uh, like uh, when football season rolls around, maybe do the show on Friday, like uh, yeah, uh, Friday nights under the lights, uh, talking cats or something like that. That'd be pretty cool. I've I've thought you know, about that, Caden. Right, right before the game day or something. We, we've thought about it, Caden. Uh, you know, we've got 13, 14 people on right now. So, you know, so I mean, but it's uh, Friday night might end up being a better better time to do the show. Who knows? Yeah, I know when we and first started, weren't we doing it on like a Sunday, and then we switched. We've to, we switched two or three times. We've done it all all days of the week. I feel like by now, but yeah, that's oh. that's not a bad idea if we start switching to Fridays. By the by the way, I hear you both really, really good tonight. When Caden talks, I hear him really good now. When you talk, I hear you pretty good now. So, well, that's good. We did, I can hear both of you in or out now. Well, well Josh, last week I was going through the wrong mic because I'm an idiot. So <laughs> that that ex- would explain that. But I'm glad we got it all figured out. Right. <laughs> Yeah, Caden was going through his yeah. uh his like camera mic or something last week, so it was a little strange. But um, I'm with Caden on the two big men. Why can't we have the two big men? I think if we had two big guys inside the paint like that, it would be so hard for any team to get down through there. And then we got you know we got quickness on the outside. I just I think if we had uh, had the two big guys, I just think we would do a lot better. But, you know, that's Josh, just, yeah. I think it all comes down to NIL these days. I think everyone wants their playing time so they can make their NIL money, unfortunately. And I think that's part of the reason why NIL is ruining everything, personally. Well, NIL hurts the team this year. If we, Because we talked about when we, we saw the team in the Bahamas, we were like, oh, my God, this, this team is going to be awesome. And the next thing you know, they got a little losing the street and – Riff talked back and forth about NI deals and Oscars getting this kind of money. I've already got like $8 million in NIL deals. I don't know if that's true or not. Or maybe not eight. I'm sorry, four million. I, th- I think that a lot of that is sort of exaggerated. I think that it's more like one million, which is still a lot, but all these like 
like there apparently there was a Tennessee football recruit that was supposed to make like $9 million his first year or something. And I just don't think that that's really happening. I think they're inflating all these numbers in an effort to try to try to get recruits, honestly. So, but still it causes animosity much teammates. Now, if there's reports out there floating, now you're going to have so many players feeling like, Oh man, Oscar got 2 million, 3 million. We got crumbs. Yeah. You know, that's, 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 it's causing so much chaos. And honestly, I wish they wouldn't have done it, but I mean, I guess it was never going to be able to be stopped. Yeah. Sad part is there's no going back now and it's probably just going to get worse. It's never, never. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. It's, it's, we knew it was going to be this way. It was going to cut, uh, cut loose, you know, um, once it, once it happened, but, uh, well, Josh, got anything else for us? Yeah. One one thing, and I was going to, I was going to bring this up for, and I'll let you guys go because you can get some people else on. Uh, you remember Jamal Mashburn, right? Back in the nineties. Heck yeah. Uh huh. If if Thon plays for the New Mexico State Lobo. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. I've been wanting to tell you all that for months, and I keep on forgetting. <laughs> I finally remember tonight. Hey, we'll have to have him on the show. Uh, <laughs> the flow boats. The the Lobos. The Lobos. <laughs> New Mexico uh, Lobos. What's a Lobo? Hey, that yeah. could have made our our uh, mascot the mascot bracket. I think a Lobo yeah. is like a it's like a yeah. wolf, isn't it, of some sort? It is. Okay, it is, and they didn't make they, they missed the NCAA barely. They had a pretty decent record. They had like twenty twenty two wins. They were in a really weak conference, but they they went to the NIT. But they uh, Master and Son plays for the Lobos. Uh, yeah. Well, hey, that's where Terry Wilson. Uh, transferred to after he left Kentucky, I think to, to to the Lobos. But I don't, I can't remember if it's New Mexico or New Mexico State. But speaking of New Mexico, uh, do you guys, you guys remember uh, Jamal Baker? Yeah, he's transferring for like the fifth time. He he's still playing college basketball, which is crazy to me. I it feels like he played for Kentucky in like the nineteen nineties. Um, he's a seventh. Stem- Seventh year yeah, he's a seventh year senior. Yeah, he's a seventh year senior, and he's transferring for the fourth time. And he's transferring. It's either New Mexico or New Mexico State. So yeah. And, and another point, real quick on this, they should stop that after two transfers. That's it. No more. Yeah, I they, feel, they just let them, they just let them pack up and go wherever. It's just getting, that's getting out of control. It's like free. It's basically between NIL and the unlimited transfer. It's basically yeah, free. You get to graduate high school when you want. You get to graduate college when you want. And then, yeah. I mean, yeah. There was another story. NIL, about, you know, um, you know, could Coach Saban give a player a car because he owns dealerships in uh, oh. in Alabama? It's a good question. You know, that, would, would, would that be a violation? So there was another show. I can't remember who it was. They got Comcast Sports the other day, did one, and there was a big discussion about that. Well, the way I look uh, yeah, at they've it, opened, they've opened their stuff for a slippery slope, that's for sure. The way I look at it is there's there's always been violations happening under the table for years, and now there's like even more gray area than there was before. So I feel like that that definitely is going to go on with, you know, people giving yeah. players cars and stuff like that. That, that, that was already going on before all this yeah, started. No, that's a, so no, that's a Rick and, and Yeah. All <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, even, even some of the stuff he did still isn't legal. So, um, but yeah, well, thanks for calling in as always, right. Josh, enjoy your, your mug. Yeah. And we hope you feel better I soon. I appreciate it guys. Have a great night. All right. You too. Anybody else wants to call in and give us a shout? 502-234-1504. You know, Coleman, it's got me thinking. You can you can pretty much do whatever you want now in college basketball, but Louisville still finds a way to get in trouble. Yeah, that's a good point. It's like, how does Louisville like still manage to break the rules, even though they're they're as loose as they are now? Uh Claude says Ricky P, that slipper snake. <laughs> slipper snake. Slipper snake, talking slipper snake. Um, this is still the my favorite UK game that I've been to. Basketball game uh, was I went to Rick's last game at Louisville uh, in Rupp Arena, and Katina Powell was there, and he flipped us off on the way out. Didn't he like try to that. say he didn't flip you off? Yeah, he said he's holding up the number one 
uh, finger and everything. And yeah, that was, he was wearing a white suit. Uh, he looked like a skeleton. It was like, it was pretty insane. Uh, I was, I was sitting right behind Louisville's bench. So, uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a good memory. Uh, pretty cool. So yeah, anybody else wants to call in 502-234-1504, but in honor of announcing that Freddie Maggard is going to come on the show, uh, at some point this summer, which we'll keep y'all up to date on when that's going to be. Um, and in honor of me wearing my Kentucky football shirt, I thought, Caden, you know, it's never too early to look ahead to football season and do some predictions. So I thought we'd go through the 2023 Kentucky football season and give some way too early uh, predictions for this fall and see see what our early indications are of what our record is going to be. So uh, what do you say? You think uh, you think it's too early? do that I, i'd be happy to share my uh football knowledge and predictions <laughs> all right cool well i'm getting that pulled up here let's see uh steven says what do you guys think changed for dickinson to get to kentucky oscar leaving yeah i think oscar leaving i, I think it's not public knowledge yet but I, I i think oscar has basically told cal and or dickinson which by the way they're they're friends um dickinson and oscar uh have sort of known each other for a while i think they've talked and i, I think oscar's probably all but made his decision at this point would i don't know anything but i mean that seems like a reasonable conclusion yeah so, i watched yeah. this interview with dickinson earlier i did not know who was interviewing him but it was after cal visited him and he basically said that something changed which made cal decide to travel up there to see him which that something is obviously Oscar probably leaving. So, Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I would say so. Josh says, when are y'all going to start selling that hat? Well, Hey, we need to get on that. We, we're going to keep you up to date on that. It's going to be this summer. We're going to get them out this summer. Uh, okay. We need to, we need to put this hat on the market. You need to get one of these hats. I don't have a hat yet. So, um, but yeah, we're going to, we're going to get that, uh, going to get that out there. Um, uh, what Claude just said at Barstool Sports. Oh, he's probably. I guess we saw the same interview. Oh, okay. I was like, I was like, how come Clyde just randomly said Barstool? <laughs> um. All right, Kentucky 2023 football schedule. Caden, are you ready to go through these here? Well, we got this first. Oh, okay. Our our old friend uh, <laughs> is back with all the uh, <laughs> all the stuff there. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Well, can anyone I- uh, translate this? It looks like we yeah. got a WhatsApp number. Is this like OnlyFans? I I think that some somehow that is more sketchy than OnlyFans. Uh, so, um, well, uh, glad you're joining us there, Navin G nine 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 seven three two three zero two zero. We had someone earlier that's saying they can give away money. So, um, Christine Wellenstein four hundred twenty six million. Yeah, that's like Cal's salary. Yeah, that's like a day for Cal. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's like yeah, the NIL well, money they, they give out at, at uh, Tennessee. I, I don't recommend this to our viewers, but... Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't you, say... If you so. want to try it and let us know how it goes. Uh, and does this mean that we're we're getting famous that like these like people think they can they can reach enough people in our comment section <laughs> to post this stuff? Because I, I mean, I... I take that as a bad chance, to be honest with you. I think so. I think that's what that means. Uh, but anyway, uh, on September 2nd, the Kentucky football team is going to open up their 2023 season against uh, the fighting Stephen Campbells of Ball State. Uh, so we're going to open up with uh, with Ball State. Caden, maybe we need to get Stephen Campbell on to get his – Get his preview take the game. On. Yeah. yeah, preview the game. I'm sure he has some some insights on that. But I, I'm going win, right? I mean, we can beat Ball State. God, I hope so. Yeah, win. <laughs> okay, one and zero so far for uh, for both of us. Okay, then we're going to come right back the next week, September 9th at home. We're going to play Eastern Kentucky. Um, last time we played EKU, they almost beat us at home. Now that was that was like five or six years ago, at least. Um, but so we, we, you know, we've gotten a lot better since then, but Caden, I'm, I'm going to win. It'll probably be closer than what people think, but when, um, Claude says he's going to go to the first game, by the way, here. So 
he can send us some pictures again. We'll have that have that up there. Um, uh, Akron is going to be our third game. So, Caden, we're, we're starting off starting off easy here uh, with the three stinky team. I mean, knock on wood, you know, I don't want to jinx anything, but we uh, should be able to beat the Akron Zips, you know. When? That, that's what their mascot is. Speaking of mascots, they're the Zips. Like uh, short for zipper? No, they're uh, it's it's actually a kangaroo. Uh, I'm not sure how zip uh, translates to a kangaroo, like, but they are indeed kangaroos. Like their, their pouch or something? I don't know. Just throwing that out there. Oh, it could be. Yeah, I, I don't know what that means either. Then, Caden, we're going to have to take a trip to the powerhouse. We're going to have to go down to Nashville, play at the Vanderbilt Commodores on September 23rd, our SEC opener against Vanderbilt, Caden. Can we avenge the loss from this year? In Nashville, no. <laughs> so you you think you're going with like Cody Peebler's take the Vandy's winning the national championship next year? We got beat by Vandy last year. We and did. We are going to be worse this upcoming year. So therefore, if my logic serves me correctly, I think we're going to lose to Vandy. I'm going to win. We're not losing to Vandy two years in a row. Now I know I said there was no way we're going to lose to Vandy this year. Uh, but no, I, I, I'm going win. I think we avenged the loss and Caden, that would be, you know, that'd be a good game to go to, you know, tickets will be cheap. Cause it's, you know, cause Vandy sucks as we've established with their fight song. Their fight song yeah. But to say their fight song does too. With the tier list, you know, it'd be easy to find, you know, it's not a far drive for you. It'd be easy for me to fly to Nashville. So I think that would be a, a, a good game to, to go to. Uh, so, um, then, we have our SEC home opener against the Florida Gators. We beat, we've beaten Florida two years in a row now. Can we make it three, Caden? Yeah, we'll beat Florida. Okay, you sound confident there. I th- confident. Yeah, I, I, I think. Well, you know, they won't. They don't have Anthony Richardson anymore, and he really wasn't that good to begin with. Um, so yeah, I, and we got him at home. So you know, I think we'll be able to beat Florida. So I'm going. You know, I, I think we have a five and zero start here. Uh, one. It's pretty you. So you've got us beating Florida at home, but losing to Vanderbilt on the road. Correct. That would be the most Kentucky football thing uh, that that's that's ever happened. So, which is why it's going to happen. Yeah. Now, Caden, I think we're going to tend to agree on this one. Uh, we got to travel down to Athens and play at Georgia. I'm going to go uh, going to go with the L here. I uh, have to say, yeah. Uh, now, for all you listeners out there, Caden says that he's not he's not going to be a true Kentucky football fan until we can beat Georgia. Now, Caden, you've got to cut him a little bit more slack than that. I mean, Georgia was literally eating chicken wings in the third quarter of the national championship, up like forty-two to nothing over TCU. Like it's Georgia. Like you've got to like I know we're not going to beat them, but you know you got to you got to celebrate some Kentucky football, even if we don't beat Georgia. But why do we have to have a mediocre standard? That's my point. It's not, again, Georgia was eating chicken wings in the national championship. No, but the Look Kentucky the- football <laughs> attitude is, oh yeah, let's go nine and three. Then that's going to be a successful year. Well, right now I-, I have us at, at five and one. So you're the one that has us losing to Vanderbilt. I do. <laughs> Well, isn't that a mediocre standard? Until they prove me otherwise. Okay. Well, so so what would make the season not mediocre for you? Like what record? Uh at least 10 and 2, but probably 11 and 1. So 11 and 1 is not <laughs> mediocre. You, Kate, you do realize we have Texas and Oklahoma joining the SEC in a couple years and Probably winning six or seven SEC games will be considered good at that point. It's time to to get over the hump as well. All I'm saying, it's been 10 years. Well, I mean, it's been way more than 10 for Kentucky football, but it's been 10 years of being pretty decent. You know, I, I think it's it needs to be time. That's all I'm saying. All right. Well, uh, well so we're going to lose to Georgia, right? Uh, okay, and then we, we play Missouri at home. Uh, we're going to shove them in a locker, Caden. We're going to beat Missouri. As all, yeah, we're gonna beat Missouri. You, yeah, you can't disagree with that. Yeah, we're beating Missouri. Okay, <sighs> then we have we get them at home. 
But we got to play the stinky Tennessee Volunteers. And Caden, after what I saw this year, this year, this year's Kentucky Tennessee game was probably the ugliest thing that I have ever witnessed. Like that, that was absolutely awful. Um, I turned the game off in the third quarter. Uh, I have, I never do that for Kentucky games. The only Kentucky athletic event of any sort that I've ever turned off other than that Tennessee game this year was when we lost to Duke, lost it when when they had Zion by 30. Uh, I turned it off pretty much at halftime. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't pick us to beat Tennessee, um, after that, so I'm I'm going loss. That's a loss. Uh, at Mississippi State, this is another one, man. Like, which I just learned that um, Mississippi State's bulldog. By the way, the, the their old bulldog, like the old live mascot, is buried underneath the 50 yard line of their football field, which is which is some like voodoo stuff. Um, we always play. <laughs> Uh, terribly at Mississippi State, like every single year, for whatever reason, we play awful in Starkville. Um, so I have to go lost because no matter how well we're playing that year, like we always lay an egg in Starkville. So I can't pick us to win there. Man, I did not know that about the 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 bulldog. That's crazy. That explains that. Yeah, that's a loss. Uh, and then. We got a nice tune-up game coming back to Lexington against Alabama. Um, <laughs> so, uh, tough little stretch here for the Wildcats. Uh, it, you know what, Kate and I, we're, we're thinking about going to this game. Uh, my my old trumpet teacher uh, is a huge Alabama fan, and he is taking off of work uh, to come from Colorado to Lexington to go to this game. Last time uh, that Justin – went to uh, a game in Lexington uh, for K- Kentucky and Alabama was in 1997 when I was a baby and I was also watching the game and, uh, and Alabama lost and we, uh, we took down the goalpost. Uh, that was the second time in the history of the world that Kentucky's ever beaten Alabama in football. But nevertheless, Justin returns to Lexington. Uh, we take down the goalpost. We beat Alabama. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm going to go win. On November 11th. I'm sorry, loss. Well, that <laughs> that's all right. Um, at South Carolina, the SEC doormat. The uh, SEC doormat, South Carolina. One fan held. And you're right, on it. I yeah. didn't. I didn't even get to. You know, I was. I was going for it, which reminds me, uh, Caden. You know, I, I don't think we're going to beat Tennessee. Uh, but I, I do hope we beat Tennessee. So um, let's get a little pep talk from Kaywood Leopard. God bless you, and good luck, and go kick Tennessee's ass. So yeah, that that's that's going to be my prayer that day is that that we do kick Tennessee's ass. But you know, uh, I, I can't pick us to do it. So at South Carolina SEC doormat, we've already established that uh, we avenge uh, the Spencer Rattler. Uh, you know, magic from this year and the Will Levis injury uh, by beating the Gamecocks in Columbia. So, yeah. I'll, I'll finally give them a win on this one. Oh, you finally – and then at Louisville, I mean, that's, that's a win, right? It's all obviously a win. Yeah, they, I mean, they are going to have Jeff Brom this year, so, you know, they're going to they're gonna be better. Uh, old old Purdue coach there coming in. But, um, you know, I, I still think uh, – I, I still think we're going we're going to beat them this year. So, what's that have us? Lead? So, so that makes me have us at what I had us losing the uh, Tennessee, Georgia, Mississippi State. So that had I have them at nine and three. I had them beating Alabama. So, and what what's what's that for you? Um, I think I, I want to say seven eight, and five. Eight and four. I think you're eight and four because you had them losing the what Georgia. Vandy. Tennessee. Oh, you had to lose in the Vandy too. Okay, I forgot. So that's seven and five. Okay, so I'll go nine and three. Uh Caden goes uh seven and five. So you know, we'll see. We'll we'll revisit those predictions as we get uh get closer to the to the thing. Clyde says, Coleman, you're on drugs. Um 
<laughs> Why well, was he saying? Was he saying because I think we're gonna beat Alabama? Alabama, I think so. Oh well, Josh is always optimistic. Going to beat Georgia. I don't think we're going to beat Georgia, but I, I don't either. Yeah, I I think we out of the out of the two games. So we got to play Georgia and Alabama this year both, which is really unfortunate. But out of the two. I, I think we have a better chance of beating Alabama at home than we do at Georgia on the road, right? I mean, I agree, but when, when you're saying we have a better chance, I think the better chance is we have a 10% chance of winning versus a 5% chance of winning. It, but isn't that how math works? Isn't that a better chance? I mean, we're not talking about how much the chance is. We're talking about is it better or not. It's and better, I, yeah. I, I think it is. I, I think it absolutely is. Um so uh, yeah, and speaking of college football, this is gonna this is gonna play a big. We're we're getting some more uh, Navin G nine nine three whatever comments in here for all uh, problem solution call. I, if you got, I, I guess hey, if you got any problems, you call them and they fix it. If he can pay Cal's buyout, <laughs> well, then that's our yeah, that's our problem. Yeah, that's our problem here. <laughs> it says for all problem solution. Yeah, that's that's a little that's a little sketchy. I'm not gonna lie. For if you have any problem, just call this WhatsApp number. Uh, so, uh, speaking of God bless you, God bless you if you fall for that. Uh, Claude says against Alabama we will be chopped liver butter biscuit. Well, okay. Yep. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> as I was saying, a new rule has now been approved by the NCAA for college football for this season. Uh, a clock, the clock is now going to stop or, or actually it's, it's no longer going to stop after you get a first down in college football and years past, you get a first down in college football, the, the, the game clock stops so that they can move the chains. Now the clock is going to keep running even after you get a first down. Um, the clock has always stopped since 1968. So this is going to be a big change. Um, but Caden, it's going to shorten the game quite a bit. And I feel like, especially in late game situations, you know, when you're trying to drive down the field to like go get in field goal range or something like that, you don't have any timeouts. I mean, this is gonna, this is going to be a big factor for, you know, kind of game situations. Yeah. I'm a big fan of that. I mean, football games are already lasting like four hours long. So anything we can do to, to shorten it, I'm a fan of. I, it's, but what are you in a hurry for? You're trying to get out? You, you know, trying to get away from the game? <laughs> Some games, I'm not going to lie, I don't really enjoy watching. I mean, when it's Kentucky, Georgia, Kentucky, Alabama, games like that, yeah, you, you get up for it. But when it's – some, sometimes it's kind of brutal, Coleman. I'm not going to lie. Well, I mean, that's fair. That's fair. I, I can I can understand that. Um, like spring games. For example, Kentucky's not doing a spring game this year because they had to re revamp the field or whatever, which I'm not sure why they couldn't couldn't schedule around that. But LSU's spring game is tomorrow, uh, so I, I'm I'm going to LSU's uh, spring football game tomorrow. I'm excited about that. Going to going to see uh, Brian Kelly and his family, and uh, going to go watch. Uh, Watch Jaden Daniels uh, play some quarterback, and uh, you know, should LSU should be good this year. Now LSU fans are they're a little crazy. They're I had an LSU fan tell me the other day that 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 there's no way that they're that they won't make the playoff this year. You know, I think they should slow down like just a little bit. Uh, but you know, I th- I do think they're going to be really good this year, I, and I think Brian Kelly has grown on me, so that's for sure. LSU, fans, they, they got their they got their. Uh, they got their sort of heads, you know, full right now. They've got uh, the number one baseball team in the country. Women's basketball just won the national championship. Uh, football just had a great year. Looks promising for this next year. Uh, only thing they need to get going is Matt McMahon and the women's basketball team, Caden. <laughs> That's the only thing they need to get going. Everything else is great. You know, you got gymnastics, uh, you know, is obviously always great at LSU. So, uh, yeah. I didn't know that. Uh, but, uh, and yeah, exactly. Brian Kelly beat Alabama uh, his first year at LSU. Now Baton Rouge was crazy that night. I mean, it was insane. That's one thing that you have to understand about Baton Rouge is when there is a game 
like the entire city shuts down. Like you can't, you can't even drive. Like, I mean, like you literally cannot even like move your car. Like you can't drive That's anywhere. Oklahoma state That's was too. Cause Baton Rouge is already like small and overpopulated. Uh, the infrastructure is not made for as many people, you know, that live here as they do. And then you have all these people come to the game from out of town, you know, the stadium seats 102,000, you know, it's, it's crazy. It's like, where do all these people, like, where do you even park your car, you know, kind of thing. So, um, so nevertheless, excited for the spring game tomorrow. That'll be good. Um, so Claude says that's how Lexington needs to be when Kentucky basketball plays. Yes, it is. Uh, that's one thing about the Rupp Arena atmosphere. Caden, I don't know if you, you know, you went to more games than, than I did this year. How did the, this might sound like a stupid question, but how did the Tennessee game atmosphere compare to the Florida uh, A&M? atmosphere oh, it, it was night and day not anywhere close so you think it you think it was actually would you say it was a good atmosphere at the tennessee game like do you think the fans it was brought crazy it? it was crazy okay well yeah more pro- it, i just feel like i feel like people in rep arena like don't get as like hype as they could or should they forget. did that game now the florida a and oh. game all we could hear only guy talking was the guy behind us <laughs> that's that's fair like that that's how um you know that's how i felt about the rick patino's last game there at uh at at kentucky i feel like it was like a different vibe like everybody was on their feet the whole game nobody hardly sat down it was it was crazy um but well uh well actually clyde sent me something that I wanted to bring up here. Uh, it was like a little potential starting lineup thing for next year, which includes Oscar Sheboy. So maybe for sake of argument right now, we can, we can sub out Oscar for Hunter Dickinson, but this is our potential like roster for next year. So you got Robert Dillingham, uh, DJ Wagner, Antonio Reeves, Justin Edwards, Hunter Dickinson, Aaron Bradshaw, Reed Shepard, Yigana Onyenso, Adu Thierro, and Lance Ware. Um, that that's a pretty good. I mean, do you feel like he can win a national championship with that roster, Caden? How many are on that list? That's ten, I think. Yeah. Uh, the, and that's not that's not our that wouldn't be our whole roster. That would sort of be our rotation. Uh, and well, I expect Lance Ware to. Who knows? But I expect him to not be there. Right. So if you take him off, I mean, and Kyle in the comments here says we could be super, super stacked if these incoming superstars pan out. Yeah. If, if really, it, like, if DJ Wagner is as good as everybody's saying that he is, then I mean, it could be, it could be lights out. Um, With a lineup of of Wagner, let's say, let's say. Gosh, I don't even know what you would do. Wagner Reeves if he comes back. And then Livingston, Aaron Bradshaw, and Hunter Dickinson. That's a good five. And and this is the question here um, that everybody asks is platoon system again. And you were talking about this earlier, Caden. If you if we had two bigs, we somehow I had Oscar and Hunter, like hypothetically. I mean it obviously worked pretty well in 2015, but I mean, do you think that that's even like an option with this team? Like, do you think there's a scenario that we could have a platoon again? Like, let's say Lance stays, could we could platoon with that lineup? I think even if Lance doesn't stay, you can. I don't think he'll do it, but our second our second five could have Onyenzo and. Um, I mean, we could put we could put Bradshaw coming in with the second five and have Justin Edwards come in and do small ball, something like that. Well, you don't so necessarily who, have to have Oscar and Hunter Dickinson to do platoon. I don't think. Well, who would be our starting? Let like let's say we don't have Oscar, we have Hunter Dickinson, like instead of Oscar, just for sake of argument. So, who would our starting lineup be? Would it be DJ Wagner? So it'd be like Wagner Reeves. Um. Who, oh, Justin Edwards, Livingston. Justin Edwards. Yeah. Uh, 
Livingston. Oh, yeah, you throw in Livingston. I, Livingston's not even on this list. I mean, that would be a game changer if Livingston. Yeah, that's, that's probably the key yeah. to platoons if he comes back because he can play that three or four. Oh. I'll say that, Clyde. Like, if Livingston comes back, then I think I genuinely think we could platoon. We'd almost have to platoon. Um, because yeah, we're gonna have Justin Edwards. Um, we're gonna have Aaron Bradshaw. We'd have Hunter Dickinson. We'd have Kingsley or Onyenso. Um, Adu Thiero has got to play minutes, right? Reed Shepard has got to play too. Like Reed Shepard's no pushover, you know, he's a McDonald's All American. Everybody sees Reed, it's like, oh, he's this Kentucky kid that's that's good. Like, no, he I mean he's a he's a McDonald's All American. Like, I mean, he's he's on the same level as these other guys. So is is Dillingham coming next year or not? <laughs> See, I don't know. I've heard I've heard rumors that like he might not be eligible. So we need him to do a platoon. Because who else is gonna play point guard? I, I mean I I feel good about like sort of him coming and playing if like CJ is transferring and like some of these other people that have decided to leave like Severe obviously I mean I think Severe was gone anyway but uh, Kyle says someone told me Dillingham himself said he's coming I hope he does we we do we do need a backup point guard I feel like that's like the one thing we kind of like if if something happens to Wagner or when Wagner sits the bench, like who's going to play point guard if we don't have Robert Dillingham, sort of thing. It would right? have to be Reeves, and we don't really Again. want. That. I mean, he did well, but we want him to play the two, right? We want Reeves to be a shooter. Um. So, man, I didn't even think about it. yeah. If, so if Chris Livingston comes back, who would who could be our starting it, our starting lineup could be DJ Wagner. Reeves. I mean, is there a is there a scenario you would play Dillingham like with Wagner? You could play like Wagner, Reeves, Dillingham, uh Justin Edwards. Man, I don't know. You'd have a lot of like you'd almost have to platoon at that point. Let's make a so let's say we have Dillingham and and Chris Livingston back. Let's make a blue and white platoon. Who who would be like our starting? Like who would be the blue platoon? Wagner, Reeves, Edwards, Livingston, Dickinson. Okay, and then who's the white platoon? Dillingham. Yeah, Dillingham. Thierro, yeah. Reed Shepard. Reed Shepard. Bradshaw. Onyenso. So you would put you would put Bradshaw coming off the bench? I guess you would if you Livingston had comes back. In Livingston, yeah. I mean, that could work. Do you think that's a talented enough, like, white platoon to, to platoon? Either I feel like either one of those five should be able to put up a fight against anyone. Yes. Should be able to. I mean, I'd be down. But Cal has said he's never going to platoon again. But I think if you have that roster, then, I mean. How do you, you not? You lose players if you don't. But I yeah, I think the difference maker there is is for sure Chris Livingston, right? Like if Livingston comes back, you can and, and Dillingham is eligible, then you can platoon, I think. So well yeah, that's we have to point. have either Livingston or Ware come back. Yeah. Which I think uh, Livingston's probably more likely. Yeah, that's crazy. That's a good point about Ware. Like I'm surprised he hasn't like said anything yet. And I haven't even heard anything going one way or the other about where either. Like I've heard nothing about where, I don't know if you have nothing. No. So yeah, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. But if they both come back, man, yeah. Platoon is an option. Let's bring back the platoon. I'm good for it. You know, let's go, let's go 40 and 0 and actually go 40 and 0 this time. Especially if it's cows last year, let's do it. No, I think that'd be a good way for Cal to go out. <laughs> Go for it, you know. Yeah, do the platoon and do it right this time. Do do it right this time. The thirty-eight one wasn't good enough. <laughs> no, Caden with class. You football. know my standards are high. Came and say it's mediocre in football. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get over the hump. Yeah, gosh, 
get you got to beat Wisconsin. Yeah. Or at least win the last six, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean that those are the important ones, right? As long as we don't have any injuries, Claude says, yeah, that's, that's right. Man, we get, do we get injured more than any other team in America? Cause I feel like we do. And that's for basketball and football. <laughs> I feel like we get injured a lot. I would say so. Yeah. Um, but, well, we talked some Kentucky football predictions, taught some Freddie Maggard's going to come on the show this summer. Uh, Big Mac sauce is going to be available um, for the general public. Uh, yeah. We talked it's about uh, the violent birds. The mocking birds. Yeah, absolutely. Mocking uh, birds. <laughs> um. Oh, one other piece of news I wanted to mention. Cutter Bowley, who's a four-star quarterback out of the Lexington Christian Academy, uh, who's being rec- recruited by everybody around the country, Alabama, Georgia, everybody, um, is trending toward Kentucky right now. So that would be huge if we could keep that quarterback home, uh, having him as our future quarterback in Lexington. I feel like that would be, uh, I feel like that would be good. Hey, Steven said someone PM me the link to become a supporter. Okay. And you can just drop that down in the, in the comments again, Steven Caden's going to drop that in the comments. Anybody else that wants to take a look at that? He, he saw that mug and he thought, man, I got to have one of those. Caden, I sort of like revamped our website recently. I mean, it's, it's nothing special, but like I sort of updated it a little bit. Like, the, you know, I, I have, we, we have our like little, well, it's not working with the whole uh, virtual background here, but you know, if you could see it, you could see that our caricature is on there. And that link that Caden has just posted in the comments will take you to the support section of our website and it will tell you how to support us. So you can do that. We we need to add um you need send me that log on because we need to add that that Scott Salise section with his Oh logs. that's right. We need to I keep forgetting yeah. about that. We do. We need to add his uh, his monologues. Yeah, we need to get him his hat too. We have all of them. He sent all of them transcribed to us, right? We just need to get it up on there. Yeah, he transcribed them all. Uh, and Josh says, "Now send me that hat." Yeah, we're gonna keep you all updated. We're gonna get that hat out there too. I feel like, but the hat seems like it's in high demand. So maybe we can get yeah, that. Yeah, Marsha. Marsha wants a visor version too. So <laughs> she does work on that. Well, sounds like we got we got some fans. Uh, wanting some merch. So Caden, you know, we're moving on up in the world. Going to have Freddie Maggard come on. So it's going to be good. Um, You can uh, subscribe to us, by the way, on YouTube. If you haven't done that already, go ahead and uh, be sure you smash that subscribe button on YouTube. We put all our episodes um, up on there as well as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, everywhere. Um, And we also post some other funny stuff that's on YouTube. So I've been trying to kind of revamp our YouTube channel too and add some more stuff on there. So check that out. Um, And then you can, of course, subscribe to us and rate us on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you listen to podcasts. You can find the the audio version of our podcast. If you miss an episode or want to go back and listen uh, to old ones. Um, as we've already said, you can support us through Patreon with our link down in the comments that you can find on our website. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, give us a like and a follow on Facebook as that's where we do most of our stuff. That's where we go live, where we are right now, those kind of things. So be sure to check us out, rate us and all that good stuff on all our, all our various platforms, uh, there. Kyle Hatfield says we need a final four badly this year. I, I Kyle, I think we need to need the final four every year, to be honest. Uh, so we is Kentucky as uh yeah, that's not high standards, that's just being a Kentucky fan. Yeah, that's just that's what you call Kentucky. Um, but uh so we know what we call Kentucky, but Caden, what, what are we calling this episode? Talking uh, talking uh how about talking Naveen? <laughs> That's not a bad idea. I mean, I don't, I don't want to necessarily draw attention. I don't want to encourage this type of commenting in our comment section. But if you can't think of anything else, I might go with that. Uh, Talking hey, uh, mocking ing birds. Mocking ing. I can't. Yeah. I can't. I, I don't want to mock the mocking. Talking birds. Talking. Uh, 
talking sauce and birds. Yeah, it could be talking special sauce. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Talking the bean is growing on me. It's got a ring okay. to it. We know <laughs> it's the summer, you know, summer shows. So why not? You know, let, let's go ahead and, uh, you know, Wait, since can, you, can and, you even like pronounce this? Jai? No, uh, I don't know what that no, is. I'm not, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna. Um, well, you know, <laughs> since Claude said it too, and double down on your suggestion there, maybe, maybe we ought to go talk in the veen. So ep episode number 48, talking the veen. I, you know, let's let's do it. It's um, how do you spell that? N a v e e n. Okay, well, we'll we'll add that to the to the episode list. So, um, well, guys, thanks for thanks for checking us out. Um, as always, we appreciate it, and uh, check us out next week. We're not going to do the show next Thursday. Probably, we'll probably do it another night next week. Maybe Friday again. Uh, but I, I, you know, I've got a concert next Thursday night again, so you know I, I won't be able to do next Thursday. So we'll we'll keep you up to date uh, on, on when we're going to do our next show. Uh, but I think, hey, I think this Friday's worked well, Caden. Could be a good one. Could be a good time. Could be a good time. So, uh, well, uh, so we will see you then. I think the talent week. is too lopsided, lopsided for a platoon. What? I like I think, talent. I I like talent. Yeah. Um, it's a. I, I, he, I, he's saying the top five are a lot better than the bot, the second five. I think is what he's saying, but maybe. But I mean, I think we, I think it can still work. I like platoons, you know. I think, but let's give we'll, it a we'll, shot, we'll, you know. Let's give it a shot, yeah. Um, and Claude says, "Yeah, this Friday worked perfect." Well, if it worked, you know, if it works for Claude and it works for everybody else, I think you know, we might, we might stick with it. So we'll keep you all up to date on on that kind, sort of show time. But in any case. Uh, we will see you. Oh, and even Josh says Friday is better. Well, Caden, okay, we we might we might be being petitioned to change our show time to Fridays. Might be good. I think but, I think I think we might get more viewers on Friday. Well, we general, will so maybe we should do that. Well, <laughs> hey, Claude says Friday. talking Friday. I mean, that's that's a good option too. Coleman's just not a fan of Naveen. How could you be a fan of Naveen in here dropping the, you know, call this she, number and it'll solve all your problems? or he just sees how big of a deal our podcast is becoming and they think that they can jip some people on it. Well, I'm flattered that they think our podcast is big, but I'm not flattered you think you can jip people on the podcast. So I think our viewers at Talking Kentucky are too smart for this, for Naveen. Yeah, we're too... We're too smart for Naveen. That's why I'm saying we can't be called talking to Naveen. We can't encourage this type of behavior. You know, I All think right. talking I'm fine Friday, with talking Friday or talking platoon. Those are two good options. Let's do talking Friday. If we if we're official, are we officially moving our showtime to Friday? Am I though? Oh, are you gonna try it, Steven? Uh, yeah, Friday's fine with me. Oh, well, let's do let's do Friday. Okay, well, let's just plan on seeing it back here. You know, next Friday at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Let's let's just let's 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 talk Friday. Talking Friday. Fridays with Naveen. <laughs> it's a, Josh Hart said talking Friday because it's your first Friday show. I think that's fair. Um, okay, and and <laughs> hey, everybody's telling us what to do. Yeah, do Friday. Do Friday from now on. All right. Okay. Well, hey. That's that's fair, but if it works for Marsha too, you know, we'll we'll do it. Oh. Okay, well, for Coleman Scott, for Caden Holmes, for Naveen, and for Friday, okay, Naveen, well, can you Naveen? Can you make it with us? Okay. Well, you know, I'm I don't. Done. I'm done. I don't, I, I don't think I really care if Naveen can make it or not. I don't think it's necessarily important. But for Coleman Scott, for Caden Holmes, uh, for Naveen, and for Friday, uh, this has been episode number forty-eight of Talking Kentucky. And uh, we'll see you next Friday. Uh, go Cats. Go Friday. <laughs>